Welcome back to another episode of Food, Nutrition, and Wellness with Dr. Dan Remley. Today, he's going to be looking at photo surveys, what they are and how they help communities. So stay tuned. Welcome back to another episode of Food, Nutrition, and Wellness with Dr. Dan Remley. Dr. Dan Remley works with the Extension Program at The Ohio State University, involved with various different aspects that assist communities with good food, with good living, with good resources. Dan, always a pleasure talking with you. Thanks, Patrick. It's glad to be back. It's been a while. I really enjoy many of the different programs that you have, and you have a sort of an interesting program today, photo surveys. Just what the heck is photo surveys? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Uh, yeah, it's, this is uh, going to be a little deviation from uh, some talks I've given previously, but it's a, a project, a program that I give leadership to here in Ohio that... Um, can help communities, towns, cities, townships understand kind of how their environments can impact their health. And it also empowers uh, people to uh, take ownership of those communities, of those environments, and try to make changes so that communities become healthier. So when you talk about photo surveys, are these done by you, by uh, another individual, or is it done by the uh, community itself? Yeah, it's the photo surveys are completed by people in the community. And so um, usually they're uh, people work in teams to complete the photo surveys. Um, it could be five or six teams or it could be five or six individuals. But um, they, they're representatives of the community. Um, oftentimes they're youth. And um, so I'll talk about um, what happens during a, a photo survey and then how it can be used to um, galvanize change in the community so that um, the communities are healthier, they provide um, healthier environments so that the healthy choice is the easy choice. So um, so photo voice is, is basically a, uh, what we say, it's, it's a participatory action research. And so, People are involved in the research process of uh, learning about their communities and then <clears throat> looking for ways that um, uh, change the community so that the communities are healthier. And usually um, we use photo voice with um, marginalized communities that um, you know may be lower on the, the social economic spectrum that don't always have a whole lot of voice in the community. They don't have a lot of power. This empowers them through photography and, and they can share like their lived experience with others in the community, especially those um, people in the community that have power, that have access to resources that might be able to make a change in the community. So some of the goals of the photo, photo survey, photo voice um, project, we, we want to provide a voice for those that have, um, that often don't have a voice in the community and to instill critical consciousness and other words to raise awareness about um, people's awareness about maybe a problem in the community or uh, maybe some issues in the community they may, might not have thought about. And, um, but also to influence policy systems environments. And so this gets back to the idea of, of um, changing environments so that the, the healthier choice is the easy choice. And um, especially in communities that, um, are disadvantaged, a lot of times they uh, they have disproportionately higher rates of heart disease and cancer and diabetes and so forth. And these are all um, attributed to uh, behaviors, lack of physical activity, uh, healthy eating. And so, you know, if we can improve healthy options in these communities, um, that's going to improve the overall health of populations in these communities. This is what we call the social uh, ecological model. And what this says is that, you know, we live, um, you know, we're surrounded by um, our, our social groups, right, our friends, but also um, we live within communities. Um, 
with, you know, we get, we attend, <clears throat> we're part of organizations like churches and schools and workplaces. And then all of these are shaped by the systems in which we, we live. So policies and systems. And so an organization might be a school. So if there isn't healthy food at the school, you know, that affects me as an individual who, or as a student, because I'm not, um, I don't have access to the healthy food. So that's how example of how an organization like a school could, could influence one's um, health status or alternative. You think about uh, places where we shop in, in, uh, in communities. And so a lot of people have access to really um, fancy grocery stores, but others don't have access to those fancy grocery stores. Maybe um, you're, the places where you shop don't always carry the healthiest food choices. And so that's another example of how the environment can impact behavior. The relationships are bi-directional. So individuals have the capacity to change their environments. And so they can advocate for changes within their environments. They can write to their legislator and, and ask for um, grants, for example, to improve uh, uh, healthy choices in, in various places or improve sidewalks, for example. They can go talk to city commissioners and and, and advocate for healthy, for better sidewalks in their community so it's easier for them to walk places or bike places. And so individuals have that power to make differences in their communities. And that's what photo surveys, photo voice can do. One thing that we do in public health often is that we look at uh, the overall environment. Uh, for example, we look at a community or a county or a city and we look at what's in the environment that might influence um, people's healthy behavior. So this is uh, from Ohio State University's Knowledge Exchange. And this is looking at Lawrence County. I've got a similar project I'm working on in Lawrence County. But those little dots there represent places, grocery stores, uh, retail that accept SNAP. And so you can see, looking at this map, that we can zoom in on the map, we can see that there's many stores in Ironton, the Ironton area. But if you live out in some of these other areas, you might not have access to these stores. So that's an example of looking at something at the kind of the 30,000 foot view. But we don't know really what the lived experience is. We don't know exactly um, how easy these stores are get, easy, easy it is to get to these stores, for example. Um, we don't know really what it's like in these communities. And so that's where photo surveys can come in. It, it helps us understand what the lived experiences are, accessing food, using um, SNAP benefits, for example, in these various communities. How do we zoom into those maps and really understand the lived experience? As I mentioned earlier, um, the, the photos, the photo voice is one technique, but there's also there's other techniques, too, that you can help under, understand what it's really like to live within these communities. Um, you can give people journals and they can write um, their experiences accessing food, for example. Um, you can actually uh, videotape, uh, have them uh, give a testimonial. And, and so they can talk about, you know, what their experiences are um, accessing food. You can just go out and have uh, focus groups or meetings and, and uh, jot down notes. Um, we'll talk more about the photo voice, but there's also a process um, that could be the result of a photo voice called story maps that can be shared as well. And I'll talk about that. I delved into this photo voice um, process with a project called Heal Maps. It was developed at uh, in Oregon, actually, and it was uh, they were trying to address the obesogenic environments in rural communities because obesity rates, ch childhood obesity rates are higher in rural areas. And so um, the uh, the idea behind this uh, this Heal Maps project, and Heal Maps stands for Healthy Eating Active Living Mapping Tool. And so um, what we would do is we would I, <clears throat> recruit people to take pictures of um, features in their community that they think are either barriers or supports to healthy eating, active living. And so we'd have like five groups, as I mentioned earlier, they would go out and take about 20 pictures. So you have five groups, 20 pictures, that's a hundred pictures. That's a lot of pictures. And so we would bring the groups together and they would talk about each of their, their, their pictures and they would identify um, 20 out of those hundred pictures that best represent the experience in the community. And so they take those 20 pictures and they would um, develop a presentation for um, stakeholders within the communities. And so they would invite 
other residents in the communities, but also people like uh, leaders, um, mayors, people from the mayor's office, it could be county commissioners, leaders in the community that um, that have access to resource county planners. And so they would they would share their their pictures and ask the people in the community their opinions of the pictures after they shared their pictures and talked about why they took the pictures. So when they would go out in the community, they would choose a bike route or a walking route, and um, they would they would snap a picture of um, you know what why they <clears throat> they take a picture of something that they either thought was. Uh, inhibitive or supportive of physical activity and nutrition. And so um, this kind of gets at the overall goal of the HEAL map. So um, we're trying to understand um, people's different perceptions and the environmental um, factors that might, um, you know, lead somebody to uh, eat healthy or not, or, or be active or not be active. At the result of this uh, this process, you you would produce like an action plan it'd be an action plan for the community to address some of those features. So the community members were provided um, equipment. And when I first started doing this, it was um, probably around 2006. And we had these clunky GPS um, handheld cameras that um, this was before we had smartphones or smartphones that were really good at taking pictures. But they, we would ask them to um, identify, as I said, a bike route or a bus route or um, something that they experienced every day, and they would snap pictures of features that uh, they thought either helped or were um, were problematic in terms of their ability to be active and to eat healthy. And every time they took a picture, they would uh, write in their journal uh, why they took the picture, whether they thought it was a barrier or a support to healthy eating and active living. And they would just, you know, they would uh, basically just say, you know, this is why I took the picture, this is what it is, and this is a support or not. This is an example of Ironton, Ohio, and these are the uh, routes of the different photo mappers, the, the people that were taking the pictures. Each color represents a different route, and then there's um, where, where you see the, the um, there's different, these, um, you can see the pings of the uh, pictures and where they were taken. <clears throat> so after, the, we had about five five groups and um, they were asked to select 30 to 40 photos that best represent the um, community's food and physical activity environments. And so these are um, some examples of pictures that they had taken. And then they put together a presentation for the larger community. And um, they invited uh, different various stakeholders from the community to, to, um, to the presentation. And, and often they'd have a, like a dinner and um, they would talk about the different pictures and they would get other people's um, take on the pictures as well. And this is an important process because everybody has different perceptions of different features in the community. So as a, um, a photographer, I might take a picture of a bike trail. And my the reason for my taking that picture was, was that, you know, I think the bike trail helps me as an individual be healthier. But other people in the audience might say, well, you know, that bike, it's hard for me to get to that bike trail. So it really doesn't help me. You know, I have to, I have to have a bike rack. I don't have a bike rack. Another person might say, well, you know, I think this is a barrier because I've seen drug deals go down on this bike trail. And so this, um, this adds different perspectives to that different, that, that feature. And this all gets recorded and it goes into like an action, it goes into an action plan. But we also asked the larger community about their readiness. And we asked them questions like, you know, do people really understand the link between their environment, their community, and their health? And so we would poll the audience and we would ask um, other questions like, are your leaders supportive of changes in the community? And so we, re we record all this and it goes into a, a community action plan. This is another example of Ironton. And this was where you can see on the right, this is uh, Google Earth, but it shows uh, the routes and where the picture was actually taken. And this is the actual picture here. And the intent of taking the picture was to show how hard it is to walk on the sidewalk because it's pretty dilapidated. You can see that there's you know, grass growing up at various places. And, uh, and when the, um, the mappers talked about <clears throat> the sidewalk, 
and said it was a barrier. Other people tended to agree, or they, but they'd have different experiences. And say, yeah, and I have a, I try to go down this uh, sidewalk with a, a stroller, and it's impossible to, to uh, push the stroller. Another person might point out, yeah, you know, I'm in a wheelchair, and it's hard for me to get down the sidewalk. So you get all these different perspectives on the feature. And some people have different opinions about supports and barriers too. Communities are kind of like people. They go through different stages of change. And sometimes communities just aren't very aware of how, you know, how their environments really do shape their, um, their behaviors, for example. And so they don't really have any initiatives to change their environments and, or, or try any healthy initiatives. And so uh, what we try and do in this in this heal maps is help them become more kind of stage them to under, understand kind of where they're at in their change process, and then help them build momentum as a community to make healthy changes. And this is um, an example. We did another project in Knox County. I just want to show you uh, what the photo survey actually looks like. So this is an example of a photo survey right here. And so they would um, take a picture on their on their phone and this survey would pop up. And um, they would uh, you know, they could drop the image here and then they would describe the image. And this was a, a particular photo survey that we were doing for a community food assessment. So they would check one of these boxes here, what this picture also represents in terms of the where it is on the food system. And it, it pings the location of where the picture was taken. Um, and then they describe if the uh, the food item or a meal, uh, if, you know, the picture actually makes it um, easy to eat healthy. And then uh, what, what types of uh, transportation they had taken. And um, and then they describe, you know, whether or not uh, this, why this is a place or object makes it uh, easier and difficult to be healthy. Another, uh, besides the action plan, there's a, there's a uh, software tool called um, Story Maps. And uh, this is a, a tool that communities can use to put all their pictures onto, uh, well, digitally to tell a story. And so um, I'm going to show you an example of um, another uh, Heal Maps project we did in Westchester, where we worked with a low income uh, housing complex embedded within a wealthier community. Yeah, so this is a uh, example of a story map right here. And you can scroll through the community and learn about the community. And then you learn about the lived experiences. You can see the pictures that the mappers had taken. Um, this, for example, shows where this is the low income housing complex embedded within the wealthier subdivision. And so what we did was we we did a heal maps project with uh, members of this this particular subdivision, and they went out and they took pictures of their um, experiences accessing food. And so this map shows the opportunity index, and the light shade shows that this um, particular housing area was in a lower opportunity index area than the rest of the county. So you can scroll through it and see. Um, uh, different pictures that our mappers had taken. And for example, um, this was a, a picture of the um, the actual housing complex that they lived in. And the point of taking this picture was to show that, hey, there aren't any sidewalks in really within the subdivision that's hard to walk places. But again, and when they did the community conversation, people would say, well, you know, I'm in a wheelchair and it's hard for me to get to the, the next story. And so we learned about different um, different different at, different perspectives of that particular feature there and so you can keep keep scrolling down and, and learning about um, the community and people's experiences accessing food um, this was uh, one of our mappers uh, she accessed her food uh, at the Dollar General and she said she talked about a time where she didn't have a car and had to walk down this busy street and dodge traffic and almost got hit by a car to access this food. So we shared that um, in the in the story map. And so there's different uh, different examples of um, of pictures here. And uh, as I said, at the end of the day, um, at the end of the project, we produced this this um, the story map, but we also produced a community action report with um, the, all the pictures and then the, the results of the conversation, the community conversation. 
And so things that uh, came out of this um, was that, you know, the community really needed better sidewalks so that people could walk to um, the bus stop, for example, they could walk to the grocery store. And they actually, um, actually, after this project, they were able to talk to the county engineer and uh, put in some sidewalks. And so um, that was uh, one, one success story <clears throat> of this. So it is a way for residents in, in the community to um, empowers them to make changes and advocate for changes within their community in a nutshell. Sure. So uh, there's uh, this is an example of a suburban area, but we've also done this in urban areas and also small towns as well. So when you bring this up to the community, is it well received or do you have to spend a lot of time selling it? That's a good question, Patrick. Uh, we have found that when youth are involved, people are much more attentive and uh, their antennas really go up when the youth are talking. And so, um, yeah, when, when youth can go and they can give a presentation to a larger group, and you know share their experiences then um for example if the county engineer or county planner is there they'll take notes and uh, they'll start to engage with that community and so it can be very impactful especially if youth are involved and it is a process so i will say that um sometimes these these uh this is sort of sometimes it can catalyze a coalition or a group partnerships within the community that can work together to make changes, like, for example, to build sidewalks or to advocate for healthier foods. And that, and a lot of these changes that happen are, uh, take, take time. And uh, I, I know that uh, the areas you serve are usually rural, but is this also being done in larger cities? Yeah, we have some uh, story maps from larger cities as well. And uh, similar dynamics in, in larger cities is this, um, you know, trying to work with uh, marginalized communities and equipping them with the, uh, the photo surveys and so they can go out and take pictures and advocate for changes. And uh, is it usually involved with food or housing? Uh, what, what other areas yeah. have you that's seen? A, that's a good question. It can be used with pretty much any topic. Um, now, my experience is, my, I mean, my area is food and nutrition wellness. And so we've used this process to identify the, you know, the food and physical activity environment, the healthy eating, but others have used it to um, address things like um, opiate abuse or, um, or predatory loaning, or, you know, there, there could be any, any number of topics that um, the community could use this for. Um, smoking and vaping is, uh, is an issue in many especially with youth, and it could be used for that as well. What What are some words of wisdom for communities to look at how these can assist you? Yeah, it's. Uh, I would encourage uh, communities to, um, if you're a, a group, uh, there is a Creating Healthy Communities Coalition, and uh, these coalitions are working on improving um, the health and well-being of communities, and so people can get involved that way. Or, you know, if they have a group, uh, maybe you're a health teacher and you'd be interested in this uh, this process, you can contact me and, you know, I can work with that group if they w w might be interested in a project. I do like to have some grant funding to pay the mappers or to provide a stipend of some sort. Uh, so that's that's one thing I consider. Hey, we're talking with Dan Remley, a field specialist with the Food, Nutrition and Wellness uh, Program with the Ohio State University Extension Program. Dan, great information. And uh, like you, I, I really believe that photo surveys really do help communities. Thank you.